Yeah. Reverend Meeks, he got the biggest church right. in one of the poorest neighborhoods of all of Chicago. That's and cool. then people even challenge him, does he actually live in the city of Chicago? And let me ask you, so you would know, I, I don't do the he research. He lives in South Holland. So Reverend Meeks lives in Chicago or South Holland? South Holland. His children, I don't name names, mm -hmm. where his children, where did they go to school, Chicago mm -hmm. or the suburbs? They went to school in Worth, Illinois, Marist Catholic. They grown now? Ma yeah, Marist okay. Catholic. So they went to school mm -hmm. in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. You said Catholic school? Catholic school. You know, his church was an old Catholic school. Mm. You know, it has a school connected to the church directory, uh, which, which he purchased from the archdiocese, which, you know, people don't know that the Senate bill set, uh, 750 that he was fighting for to, to get vouchers in the system, that eventually became a Senate bill for parochial schools. And so people don't understand that he switched it. When he couldn't get it done in the public schools, he went to the parochial and said, well, let's push for the, the parochial schools to get it. And so he's very close to the archdiocese. He's very close. He's done a lot of things with the archdiocese. As a matter of fact, when he decided to run for mayor, he even met with Cardinal George. I mean, so. I mean, oh, jeez. I mean, to did he, go up on, did he go up on Aster Street in the, oh, yeah. in the house, oh, yeah. in, he, in the he, mansion on Aster? Oh, yes, sir. Gold Coast, met, man. He's met with him on several occasions. Damn. In, in, in counseling him. When he that wouldn't do it. You have to. I saw Cardinal George in the, mm -hmm. in the airport. He got a big old tall bodyguard right, right, and everything. Right, right. I wonder you had to kiss the Cardinal's ring. When, I'm serious. I mean, oh, do yeah. you go over there and kiss the ring of the Cardinal? I don't know. Think. How that I goes. mean, and I say yeah, that right, symbolically exactly. and oh, yeah. literally. When you walk in the door. Yes, sir. I'm I, serious. I don't know. I know they kissed the Pope's ring. Better believe. I don't it. know if they kissed the Cardinal's ring. What I'm saying is mm -hmm. that he going up to to mass, and I mm -hmm. say that I don't. Uh, Cardinal, I'm not saying anything bad about Cardinal George. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. The dynamics of slavery still mm -hmm. with us, and that's why the African American community is divided and conquered mm -hmm. and destabilized because of people like Meeks, like Jesse Jackson, most of our politicians, if not all of them, and our ministers, preachers, oh, and yeah. other potentates. I exactly. They've been able to, uh, you know, be the, I don't know if you know, you know, Steve Coakley, uh, who, who discovered mm. the boule by yeah. accident, which means a French word, which means advisor to the king, and, and these, this certain secret group of black people who were advising certain things that were happening in the black community. And people thought it was four sororities and four fraternities, but this made number nine. And so it was the oldest fraternity, sorority, if you, if, if you will, that was founded in 1904. They thought the alphas were the oldest, but when Steve Coakley stumbled up on this information, and now, I mean, now it's public information because of Steve Coakley, but you can go and I can give you the name of every Boulay member in Chicago, or, or, or we have the book across the country. And then I those would, names I want to see you, the book. I, I, <laughs> I, I want to see the book. <laughs> I'll make sure you get a copy of and it. The, and don't get me wrong, because then then I met a few of these people, and they're nice people. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think they mean well, mm -hmm. but. Uh, <laughs> I mean, one of the Arshan leaders here in the Boulay is Lee Walker, who's a member of the Republican Party. Yeah. And, it, and I questioned him in a meeting one day. I said, why don't you tell people who you really are? You are Sean, and your wife is one of the leaders also. Tell people that you're a member of the Boule Party and that your, your job is to be an advisor to the king. They're a consort to the king. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, and, it, and if you look at the emblem, it's, it's a gargoyle with his hands on a paw, and that paw has an urn upon it. And that basically, if you read the, what is the, uh, the, 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 the information on, the paw is the names that are in the urn is what the, the black people are protecting. <laughs> Cheeks. <Okay. laughs> Woo! So, you know, with, in spite of all of that trickery and skull, skullduggery mm -hmm. that goes behind the scenes, we should still vote for mayor and alderman, right? Yeah, I think we should vote. I mean, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, this, this two-party system is a two wings, one bird. It's still flying in the same direction. And so I think we've been fooled into thinking Martin King said that don't join either party. He said use both of the parties if they support your interest. He said, that if you can get the Republican Party to support your interest, then deal with the Republican Party. He said, but don't give your allegiance to either one. What happened after the King died was uh, people like Jesse, Andrew Young, and all those guys under the Civil Rights Industrial Complex system, they took the Civil Rights Movement and threw it into the Democratic Party. We've been stuck there ever since. But the thing about voting, I used to tell people, like, I'm going to early vote. I've early voted the past few elections at the Woodson Library. Mm -hmm. People should figure out where to early vote, right. go downtown and vote. Right. It's only like 10 minutes. That's right. It's part of my civic engagement. That's right. Why don't most of us, and you know the answer, why mm -hmm. we don't go ahead two blocks from my house, right. or early vote now, it's a really easy process, we vote. 
You go to the local meetings, the school meetings, community meetings, automatic mm -hmm. meetings. Why aren't we more civically engaged, like I say, to make sure that every neighborhood that we live in, African Americans, mm -hmm. is safe, is clean, and yeah. with excellent schools? Right. Well, I mean, you know, the number one voter in this country is the senior citizen. Uh, I think the problem with, with us is there's a, there, there's a lack of connection with this so-called hip-hop group who claim that they're, they're going to get involved. I mean, Puffy Combs came up with the uh, vote or die thing. Uh, mm -hmm. but I mean, how many of them do, do they really vote? I mean, I've seen some of the hip-hop people around the city of Chicago, but I don't know if they're really involved in the process of voting. In the last mayoral election, 22% uh, of the people voted. Daily won with 311,000 votes. There's 608,000 black registered voters in the city of Chicago. But do you still believe that you still, they, they had uh, uh, provocateur, provocateurs mm -hmm. and uh, the COINTEL program back in the day? Mm -hmm. There's got to be some some type of COINTEL program oh, to yeah. this very day. There was yeah. some dude, they just found, uh, Queen Sisters emailed me, some dude, he was some kind of agent or Jim something. Jim Allen. Who? Jim Allen. Jim Allen, huh? Yeah, uh, a guy who's had a, a website called The Movement. Uh -huh. He was the one who orchestrated the press conference for the, when the, when the so-called Jody Weiss fooled some of the ex-gang leaders into a meeting. And then he came back and held a press conference and said that, that uh, they were challenging Jody Weiss. And, and why was he calling in the ex-so-called gang leaders into a meeting saying he's going to charge them with the murders and bring back the RICO Act? Well, just, just found out that this guy is working is an undercover law enforcement uh, agent. The thing about it, you, you type in Jim Allen yeah. on the computer right. and YouTube, right. you can see this guy. Oh, yeah. I mean, type, y'all got computers at home, Jim oh, yeah. Allen. Mm -hmm. I don't know about it, I'm just one mm -hmm. of people sending me this right. information. Mm -hmm. This guy, Jim Allen, was a, he's an agent. He's an agent. Yeah. Wow. He, so won't say, he won't say what agency he works for, but, he, but, but he's undercover for an agency. But the whole premise is to, to, to make us not vote, make exactly. us not civically and get based, exactly. make us turn on each other. Exactly. See, people think, oh, y'all black folk, y'all just ignorant yeah. and stupid. No, we, we're programmed I to mean, be this way. Here's a guy who said that he was elected the almighty nation leader of the vice lords. Well, what nation of vice lords are you talking about? I mean, are you talking about CVLs? You're talking about insanes? You're talking about unknowns? You're talking about four corner, what, what nation? Four corner hustlers. You know right? what I'm saying? Gee, Which you, one are you, know you talking about? You know your stuff. You know, I mean, it's different factions of vice lords, mm. but I think 26 to be exact. So, not to mention the startups, but what nation is this guy saying that he's the almighty leader, almighty nation leader? Now he's calling himself Minister Jim Allen? So if there's a Jim Allen who's been exposed as a government agent, there's probably a lot of oh, Jim yeah. Allens that, that oh, are yeah. permeating through our community. They're not, they not filming you or, or wearing wires. They're riding in cars right next to you. Damn. Woo! All right, now we can talk about Rahm Emanuel, the election. Who, who, who are you going to vote for if the election were here today? Well, if the election were here today, I would, I would, I would vote for Danny Davis. Right now, for me, I'm doing the same thing. If mm -hmm. the election were held today, mm -hmm. Uh, Danny Davis. Y'all yeah. can call me on my cell phone at 773, uh, what is it, 517-4369, 517-4369 to, to try to convince me something else. Okay, caller, you're the first. Please, no speeches, no long life stories. <laughs> Just ask a question or something. Brief, a brief comment. Caller, you're on Viewpoint Live. Go right ahead. Yes, um, you know, I know it's a little bit off the subject where I've seen Brother Harold with no one on the dish. I was watching Jesse on, you know what I'm saying, Type right. them in. Uh, yeah. YouTube, Google, Yahoo, Jim Allen. What happened? Yeah. We go, okay, go ahead, Jesse. The, the movement. Well, uh, uh, first of all, Ho hold on, hold on for a second. Hold on. Go okay. ahead. Well, well ahead. first of all, Jesse Jackson was never ordained. Uh, he was ordained by Clay Evans. Mm. Uh, he attended the University of Chicago Theolo Theologian School for about one month. One month. One month. Ooh. And so, <laughs> his position on on becoming a minister was that he said he needed to be a minister in order to. To, to move around during the civil rights movement, but he was he was ordained by Clay Evans. Mm, all right, caller, you're on Viewpoint Live. Go right ahead. Y uh, Bill, you punch, yeah. They back on, Bill? Oh, they gone. All right, but look, let me bring somebody else on, Bill. 